let them keep on hating on this Oklahoma Sooners football team. As long as they are flying under the radar, they're sneaking up on somebody. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, you know you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football. Folks, I wanted to come to you and bring you just a, a quick recording, talk about a few things after four games coming into the week, kind of my grades for Oklahoma uh, through the first quarter of the season. It isn't perfect. Uh, they haven't been perfect. But you know what? The record is they're on their way up, and we are seeing things out of this football team we haven't seen in the past period, along with some things that, while we may not perceive it as the same thing, it's pretty freaking similar to what we saw before. All of that put together probably means this may be one of the better football teams you've seen at OU in a long time that nobody's talking about. And that's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? I was just in Cincinnati this past weekend. What a freaking amazing experience that was. Got to go out and hang around with a couple of my uh, favorite audience members. Um, you know, again, I wanted to thank, uh, you know, Justin and Christina. You know, they were great hosts. Uh, there in Cincinnati, a place I hadn't been. And I got to tell you, um, as I talked about before, I really, really, really enjoyed, uh, you know, that trip and, and enjoy that city. I think that Cincinnati is probably one of the better sports towns, period, that I've been around at all. Uh, great atmosphere inside of Nippert Stadium, which is the oldest uh, college football stadium in the country. It's obviously been, it has obviously been uh, upgraded over time. I really, again, I, I enjoyed everything about it. Uh, the fans there were knowledgeable um, and for the most part, pretty cool. You know what I mean? Uh, they were loud. They were loud, but, uh, you know, they were, they were really cool to, uh, to the visiting Sooner fans, which there was quite a few of those there too, but that place got loud a few times. And I got to tell you, the way that Oklahoma played, uh, you know, you can nitpick at this offense if you want to, but they went up against the best defensive line they've seen all season. Uh, it's one of the top defensive lines they'll see all season with Dante Corleone being just a man among boys out there. This guy is a first round draft pick all American got written all over him. Right. Um, even still, really what you saw was a couple of mishaps here and there that kept it from being larger than that 20 to seven final score that you saw. Now, of course, you do have, uh, well, not and not even just these people, but a lot of national pundits such as, you know, Brandon, uh, Brandon, what's his name, uh, from Barstool Sports. He's continually said that Oklahoma sucks. He's been stuck on that since last year. Uh, I think it's just, be, it's gotten with him. It's gotten personal. I think they use it for clicks more than anything else. Uh, they know they talk smack about OU. And in fact, everybody kind of knows if you talk smack about Oklahoma, you're going to get kind of get, uh, well, you're just going to kind of get the, what is that? The fangs come out is what Koo said on the show last night. Uh, and that's, A, that's fine. But the thing is, is it gets a lot of clicks. And I think that a lot of times we as fans for OU, we need to realize that and not give them. Uh, that satisfaction and, and give them the money that comes along with that clickbait, which is just what it is. Now, uh, something that I would tell you is you're getting a lot of that as well out of the recruiting classes and stuff. You had a bunch of those, you know, Texas creator dumbasses is what I would call them that were uh, calling themselves recruiting gurus of some sort that had David Stone as a three star. Uh, just because, you know, saying stupid things like he was the last one on the field, first one off of it, 
during the practice that they saw. He happened to be hurt during that time. Um, again, I would say that's probably the same shit. Uh, you know, um, and then you've had a bunch of people that have been, you know, fishing for, you know, saying stupid things about even Danny Stutzman, who's been the number one linebacker in the country, without a doubt, the amount of tackles that he's had. He's had defensive player of the week in the, in the country and in the conference. And Oklahoma is doing what they're supposed to do with their quote unquote inferior opponents. Um, here's what I would tell you. Let them think less of them. This is starting to look more and more and more like 2000. Nobody thought a whole lot of that Oklahoma defense either, that Oklahoma team either. They had went seven and five in Bob Stoops' first year on the job. They turn around, go undefeated, win the national title, beating Florida State. Now, am I telling you that's what's about to happen? No, I'm not. What I would tell you is, is that you have a situation here where as much as we may want to nitpick on Jeff Levy, Dylan Gabriel, those things like that, they're going out there and doing the things that they're supposed to do against the teams they're supposed to do it against. When you look at the Cincinnati game in particular, I would tell you that you have to look at it in terms of, look, Emory Jones is the kind of guy that is going to hurt you with your feet. He's the kind of quarterback that has really been a problem for Oklahoma defenses for as long as, back as I can remember quite honestly, and particularly last season, a running quarterback was kind of the death knell for OU. You saw it against Adrian Martinez in their first conference game of the season a year ago. That didn't work on Saturday. Emory Jones, who is, you know, very good on, on his feet, had to be turned into a passer, and he proved that he just wasn't that good at it. Jones on the day was just 22 of 41. That's 53.6% completing the passes uh, against Oklahoma. Also had two interceptions in that game. Oklahoma is one of the leaders in the country. Uh, actually, uh, the turnover margin, uh, they're number four in the country. And uh, they have, I believe they're number two overall. In turnovers, yes, uh, in, in turnovers, period. Turnovers forced. Anyway, as I would say, you know, and here's the thing. You know, let's take a look at some of the defense numbers overall. Uh, this is definitely, this is kind of where I feel like, uh, I guess I, I would put it like this. I've been trying to understand, you know, why all this, uh, and, and, you know, you want to see Dylan Gabriel hit that pass in that, first quarter uh, to Jaleel Farouk when he was pretty wide open. I think we've since heard that Jaleel kind of pulled up on that. He didn't overshoot it by much, and Jaleel pulled up because he was gassed. He went directly to the sideline after that as well. Uh, but it was one of those things where, yeah, if you put a little more air underneath it, maybe a little softer, he, go, you know, he runs under it, touchdown. You know what I mean? Or if you just hit him in the chest with it, it's a touchdown. He was wide open. You could have done it. Can you nitpick about it? Sure you can. But let's do this real quick. Before we go there, here's what I would show you. Dylan Gabriel's numbers overall are pretty fantastic if you look at it, okay? Um, let's see. Oops. Overall, he's got a 78.0 completion percentage. That's third in the country. His pass, passing touchdowns, he's got 12 uh, for the season, that's fifth in the country. QB rating of 197.2, also fifth in the country. Total touchdowns, uh, 14, that's sixth in the country, but only four behind Michael Penix's uh, number one spot. And then, um, you know, passing yards of 1,227 yards, that's 11th in the country. And his yards per pass at 10.4 yards per game, that's about one yard less than Caleb Williams, who is the number one in that category. Now, I've been saying this since last year, and this is something I've told you guys. This is not, he's not the same guy as is Dylan Gabriel, and you have to stop expecting him to be that guy, okay? Now, what we do know is that last year they had a top 15 overall defense. It hasn't changed a whole lot this season, 
They've had a couple of games where they were a little sputtery. I, you could always blame it, I guess, if you wanted to, on Jeff Levy, who you see there on that graphic as well, um, and some of his conservative play calling. Do you want him to hit it on – do you want him to hit wide open passes? Sure you do. Sure you do. Um, you know, in the end, look, I would also say that, you know, the offensive line – I'm not going to sit here and make a ton of excuses for Dylan. I'm gonna just going to tell you that. And I don't have to. Look at this. Look at these ratings. He is doing great things for this Oklahoma offense. He's been a leader. He's only got two turnovers on the season, you know, to go with those 14 total touchdowns, 12 passing TDs, you know. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about a 14 to 2 turnover ratio for this guy. It's out, and it's just going to continue to get better, right? Um, I would tell you that, you know, when it comes to Dylan, you get what you get. And, for you folks that think that he's not the guy and you want to get Jackson Arnold in the game, I would tell you that's dangerous. That's dangerous. It's not something that you really want to do. Uh, I would I would tell you that this is the kind of guy that he's going to get out there and do a lot. And let's look at what this offense is doing. Um, by the numbers for the Oklahoma offense, the completion percentage, this is another thing. He's largely responsible for this. You know, the other day, what did it? What was it? He missed. Uh, he had. He was twenty six of thirty eight for three hundred and twenty two yards, just one touchdown this this week. But again, uh, twenty six out of thirty eight is, um, it's still sixty eight point four percent, which is a very good percentage, right? When you compare it to the fifty something percent, fifty three percent that Emory Jones had. And, you know, you know, it, it lets you know something there. Andrew Anthony had seven receptions for 117 yards as well. Look, the, the problem on the offense is they did have a couple of turnovers. Actually, Dylan Gabriel did have a uh, – it was a fumble, and then he's also got a interception on the season. So just one interception, one fumble, which was from the other day. Uh, you know, you can't have those turnovers in that in – that, area of the field. It was right after they had missed uh, that deep shot. Well, one of the things that I would tell you about that was that you can talk about him missing that shot there to Farouk. He turned around and hits a big third down and 10 play, or hit, he had hit a third down and 10 play directly before that missed shot to Farouk. He ends up hitting another third down and 10 play a couple of plays later. Uh, and then on a third and three, he was running it. He got hit by by Corleone, coughs up the ball. You know, they recover. Yeah, you don't want him to do that, but you don't want him running into 300-pound Dante Corleone either or defensive linemen like that or even linebackers. It's just not, you know, he got popped there. Uh, in the end, I would tell you that he's playing fantastic, guys. Is he the same as what we've seen in the past at Oklahoma? No. Um, he's not Caleb Williams, he's not Baker Mayfield necessarily. I, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I believe, and this is my true feeling on this, is that Oklahoma fans are struggling. Some Oklahoma fans are struggling to get their mind around what they're seeing. They're used to seeing such an explosive offense that every week it scores 50. Right? Because it has to. And there's been success that way under Lincoln Riley's system. Right. But I would tell you is defensively, you got to look. They're first in completion percentage in the country. Points per game, third behind uh, USC. They're tied for, uh, yeah, they're in third place there. Let's see. Offensive TDs per game, they're also third in that. Yards per game, they're sixth at 506.8. Passing yards per game, seventh at 349. That's only about 15, 20 yards difference from the number one team in the country. This offense is doing what it needs to do. Now, you can sit there and tell me, well, we haven't played anybody yet, Jason. Well, okay, you've played who you've played. Okay, you've played who you've played. And we know that from last season, whenever they didn't have Dylan Gabriel in the game, what did this offense look like? It was non-existent for the most part, particularly the passing game. You got to give this guy a chance to do what he's going to do. Now, that rushing game, we would like to see that get uh, buttoned up a little bit. I think, you know, Coach Venables talked a little bit about in his press conference yesterday that he'd like to see 
somebody step up and become the main guy or two, right? Um, I think that that's, that's definitely something that needs to happen. Here's the one. Here's the last thing I'm going to talk about this. And I want to say that so far overall, you have to give these guys at least an A minus looking what they look like right now. They cannot help the schedule that they were both given by the Big 12, nor can they help the fact that the Georgia game was taken off the schedule. That would have been a nice uh, measuring stick to measure OU by. What I will tell you is, is the longer that people continue to talk bad, as far as outside of the program is concerned, the better it is for OU if they can fly under the radar. Eventually, you're only two weeks away and not even a full two weeks away from the Red River shootout with Texas, who has beaten Alabama on their turf, so is considered the considerable favorite. Again, we know how we feel on this channel about that. I don't know that they are really... They're going to have to prove it to me. You know, they're just going to have to prove it to me. Guy gets, a guy gets a name like seven wins, Sark, it sticks with you. You know what I mean? Until you can prove otherwise. He's never won 10 games. He's only won nine once. And last year, they should have probably won nine or 10 games and gagged up a couple and ended up going eight and five, right? Um, Quinn Ewers, as good as he's been at times, I don't, I think that they certainly look ahead. I don't think that they'll look ahead probably this week uh, playing, uh, you know, the team that they're going to get. <clears throat> but what I would tell you is this. The last time that they beat Oklahoma was a while back, but that's when you're going to get that uh, respect, I guess, nationally, maybe, if you beat Texas there, right? And possibly even if you were to lose a close game. What I would tell you is no matter what happens, I don't think, I think I would agree with Coop what he said on the show last night was that he didn't think that that had a whole lot of bearing on what happened moving forward. Now, it could if Oklahoma wins the Red River game, you could see them kind of uh, – well, you could see that kind of, you know, kind of hurting Texas and then maybe turning into a spiral at some point. Again, never seen them win 10 games. I would venture to say with their talent, providing they stay healthy, you would have to expect that they probably should win at least 11, right? OU's got to should at least at least win ten. Honestly, the more I look at it, they should win eleven. Again, when you look at this defense by the numbers, this defense is off the charts. Danny Stutzman doing his thing. He is en route for being a Butkus Award winner, All American type of guy, and probably a first round pick in next year's NFL draft. <clears throat> now, uh, the Athletic. Uh, has what they call the stop rate. I think this is one of the best stats in the country. It's simple, you know, how often they, they stop their opponent from getting a score, uh, and it's 85.7% of the time. That's good enough for a tie for fourth, which is uh, in the country, you know. Uh, also, scoring defense tied for second at 8.5 points per game. Uh, that's big time. They're number 11 in tackles for loss. They are... Uh, 12th in rush defense, 21st in opposing rushing yards at 95.3 yards per game. Opponents' yards per game, they're number 26 in that category at 310.8 yards per game. Also, total defense at 32nd. These are significantly better numbers than a year ago, and they're getting better. And this, I would tell you that this is a lot of this you ended up losing. You've lost, what, three starters from this defense. You got a couple back. I don't know how long Jaron Kanick's going to be out with uh, that chest injury that he had the other day. He was spitting up blood on the sideline. Uh, it could be a week or two before. I would guess you probably won't see him until at least the Red River game uh, in two weeks. Now, again, this is where I feel like the disconnect is. Oklahoma's not used to watching football like this, right? You're used to seeing explosive offense hang on because the defense isn't going to get it done. They haven't gotten it done in a long time, folks. They haven't gotten it done in a long time. The other day, I just got done re-watching the Oklahoma-Cincinnati game, 
they gave up some plays here and there. And with the running quarterback, though, used to, they would give up tons of it, you know. And this is a guy who a week ago, he had had, uh, Emory Jones had well over 100 yards in the game against Miami of Ohio, also a loss. He had 15 carries in this one for 42 yards. Just under three yards of carry there. That uh, is right on track with their 2.7 yards per rush that they've given up as a team uh, this season. Again, that's good enough for 12th in the country in rush defense. It's right around where they were with Henry Jones. A year ago, that game, when they weren't at their best on offense, they would have lost that football game. They would have lost that football game. Here's what I got to tell you. This is what Oklahoma fans have been demanding and clamoring for for a long time now. Okay? This is what you've been clamoring for for a long time. Let's remember that this is, to me, you've got to take the positive out of this. Do I want to see the offense be explosive every week? Sure. Can you expect anyone to be perfect? Contrary to, to a lot of people's, you know, memories and beliefs and stuff like that, Baker Mayfield didn't hit every pass that he threw down the field. Neither did Kyler Murray, neither did Jalen Hurts, neither did Caleb Williams. Okay? I also think some of that, you could help him out with some of this play calling. I believe, you know, he's been completing 78% of, around 78% of his passes on the season. Cut the guy some slack, man. Dylan Gabriel is not the problem. There's really not a problem offensively. Again, if you look at the offense, they're number one in completion percentage. They are in the top 10 in a lot of categories here. Okay? A lot of categories here. They're fine. Okay? They're scoring a lot of points. You know, that, that you, know, you want to see them be a little less schizophrenic. But really, that came down to a couple of turnovers. It came down to a turnover, uh, you know, and kicking field goals, uh, you know, whenever you didn't have to. You had the the snap that went off of Gabriel's chest early in the game. You know, there's a couple of little mistakes that happen. When those things happen and you got to punt a few and you got to do some stuff like that, hey, look, it, it, it very easily could have been 35 to 6. You got to remember they didn't allow a touchdown for the second time in four games this season. You got to hope that you go out there. Look, in Iowa State, I don't know that they're going to really pose a ton of threat this week. Uh, this is a depleted football team that Matt Campbell has. They did beat on Oki Light and scored in the 30s, which was kind of surprising. Uh, I wouldn't suspect that they'll do the same thing this week. Do I think Oklahoma overlooks them? No way. I don't think that that's going to be allowed at this point. I think that they, the big concern has still been there that after three games last year, they had looked good on defense. I would tell you they didn't look the same. They looked good somewhat. They didn't look like this. You know what I mean? They did not look like this. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, again, I think that this is a – Solid football team. As I said on the show last night, I do feel like this is an opportunity that Oklahoma has to make it to the playoff uh, in the end. You know, I really do feel like that's a possibility. Whether or not they get that done, we're going to find out, guys. You know, we are. But have some optimism here. Be okay with the fact that people are sleeping on your Sooners. Let them come out of nowhere. I think the more they they play the more confident they get the more they enjoy the each other and the way that they're playing and i think that this defense is getting confident more and more every day guys like pj out of he's gotten better every game this year by the end of this season he could be something special they really could be working towards that conference championship and maybe an opportunity to get into the playoff we'll find out if that happens but hey like I said, let them overlook us. I'm going to leave you with a, uh, a short video of uh, some of the stuff that we, I saw there on the trip to Cincinnati. I'm throwing it all together and mashing it together for you. That's how I'm going to leave you. Uh, but, hey, 
Thanks a lot again for coming in. Please make sure that you hit that like button. You can always become a member of the Hall of Fame Mafia, and you should become a member of the Hall of Fame Mafia as well. It's right here at the bottom right of the screen, youtube.com slash at cfb-pod slash join, or right here at the video, if you look just below me here, whoops, there, no, right there, I think. <laughs> There's a thing that says join there, a little thing. That'll give you, it's as low as two ninety nine dollars a month, guys. That's about half of the price as one of your Starbucks coffees. Um, it really, really will help out the show, us, all this content that we're bringing you. We're trying to do the best we can with that. Look, it would certainly, certainly help us be able to bring you more and better content week after week after week. You can also help us out by purchasing a Louisiana grill through our partner link. That You'll also help yourself out there. It's a win-win deal. $100 off every grill in their black label line. Unbelievable technology uh, on barbecue and smoking. You got to go check them out. We still have our official partnership with Fanatics, hofmedia.us slash fanatics. Get up to 65% off everything in the show, everything in the store, just by using our link. You can get things such. I just bought a couple of items myself uh, the last couple of days. You know, I got free shipping on one of them. I got like 50% off, uh, 50% off of a hat. I mean, it's uh, you're going to get great deals. Make sure you get in there and get your favorite stuff. But hey, a free way to do this and to help us is to make sure that you hit that like button and share us with other people. Uh, you know, that's the biggest way for this thing to grow. Our podcasts are on audio as well. Make sure you get over there and check them out. If you don't have time to watch the videos, jump in there and listen to our podcast, particularly in long form. A lot of people like to do that in the car uh, or at work with their headphones on. Great way to be able to do it. That's everywhere you like your podcast. Get in there, rate us. You can rate us on the website, hofmedia.us as well. Give us five stars wherever you're going to rate us. You know, that that helps get us out there as well. We really are trying to grow, and you are the ones that can help us do that. But take a look at this video uh, from the week, uh, from the weekend there in Cincinnati. Again, I wanted to thank the folks in Cincinnati for being such gracious hosts, and I think it's an electric city. Big win for Oklahoma. Let's get another one this week and get ready for that Red River game just over a week away from now right here. It'll be in the Cotton Bowl. Can't wait for that one. They've got some payback to get. We will see you guys on the next one.
So I was later.